I'm Dr. Eric Smith. I'm an Associate Professor of Neurology at the University of Calgary. I direct the Cognitive Neurosciences Clinic at Foothills Hospital. At the clinic, we evaluate and provide care for patients with dementia and cognitive disorders. And I hold the Kathy Taylor Chair in Vascular Dementia at the University of Calgary. I'm working with the Alzheimer's Society of Calgary to answer some of the most common questions that people have about dementia. This video is made possible by the support of the Roman Catholic Diocese. What is dementia and how common is it? Dementia is one of the most common neurological conditions. It affects 1.5% of Canadians. The lifetime risk of getting dementia is 1 in 5 for women and 1 in 10 for men. And unfortunately, we're seeing more cases of dementia because our Canadian population is getting older. There's a precise medical definition of dementia. Dementia refers to problems with memory and thinking, also called cognition, that interfere with the ability to do the daily activities of life. In its milder forms, dementia is accompanied by problems with doing finances or shopping. In its more severe forms, dementia is accompanied with difficulties with even the most basic activities of living, such as brushing your teeth or taking a shower or cooking. What are some of the most common types of dementia? It is important to understand that dementia is caused by different brain diseases. Brain diseases are the cause and dementia is the name for the symptoms that result. So for example, a cough can be a syndrome that is caused by different causes like asthma or pneumonia and dementia is a collection of symptoms that can be caused by different brain diseases. The most common brain disease that causes dementia is Alzheimer's disease. It accounts for up to half of the risk. Because Alzheimer's disease is so common, it's often used interchangeably with the term dementia, but in fact, they are not the same thing. Alzheimer's disease is the cause and dementia is the result. There are other diseases that cause dementia. In order of frequency, they are vascular diseases of the brain, such as strokes, Lewy body disease, frontotemporal dementia, and there are other causes too. How is dementia different from mild cognitive impairment? We also see patients in the clinic with memory symptoms but not the severe disabling memory symptoms that are associated with dementia. When there are low cognitive test scores, but the symptoms are not disabling, we call that syndrome mild cognitive impairment. Just like dementia, mild cognitive impairment can have many different causes. Patients with mild cognitive impairment should be evaluated by a doctor to understand what the potential contributors are. They should also have regular medical follow-up because there's about a 10 to 20% chance per year that a patient with mild cognitive impairment will progress to have dementia. We also sometimes see patients with memory concerns but have normal range test results. We call this scenario subjective cognitive decline. These patients should also be in regular contact with a doctor, at least on a yearly basis, uh, to be retested if memory symptoms worsen. When should someone worry? What is the difference between normal aging and signs of dementia? This is a challenge for both doctors and patients. It's a challenge because there are normally changes with memory that occur with aging. As one gets older, it becomes harder to learn lists of new words, uh, to multitask. On the other hand, aging is not all bad. There are certain good things that come along with aging as well, including more experience and more wisdom. You know, I'll take the wisdom of an 80-year-old over the judgment of an 18-year-old any day. Nonetheless, there are some changes that should be more concerning and should prompt you to discuss them with your doctor. In contrast, there are some more benign changes that are frequently accompanying aging and may not require discussion with your doctor. Some of the more benign changes include momentary forgetfulness, such as going into a room and forgetting what you're going to do and then you remember momentarily forgetting where you're going and then figuring it out. Forgetting names, uh, including of people, is a very common accompaniment of aging. Some of the symptoms that are potentially more serious and for which you should seek attention from a doctor include more persistent forgetfulness, like forgetfulness that's happening every day. Uh, forgetting where you're going, but then needing to call for help to, uh, because you've gotten lost. Forgetfulness that leads you to give up activities that you used to do or to enjoy, including doing things like uh, finances. If those kind of symptoms are occurring, it would be a good idea to discuss them with your doctor. 
what are the indications that someone might have the familial form of Alzheimer's disease and what options are available for them? It's not uncommon to have a history of dementia in a member of your family. Dementia is a very common condition affecting 1.5% of Canadians. So most Canadian families have some experience with a relative who has had dementia. If there's a history of dementia in an immediate family member, uh, that means a parent or a sibling, then your personal risk may be increased by about 50%. So the lifetime risk in women would go from about 1 in 5 to 1 in 3, and for men would go from 1 in 10 to 1 in 7. Rarely there are familiar causes of dementia where a single bad gene is passed down through the family. This accounts for less than 1% of cases of dementia, and in this case the dementia onset is in the 40s or 50s. If you've had a parent who has had dementia before the age of 60, it may be a good idea to talk to your doctor about genetic counseling. We know that each individual will experience dementia differently, but could you describe the general progression of Alzheimer's disease or other forms of dementia? When dementia due to Alzheimer's disease or other ca uh, causes is in its mild stage, uh, we see problems with more complex daily activities such as paying bills, doing finances, or shopping, or perhaps preparing a complex meal. As it progresses into its more moderate stages, we see more difficulties with basic daily tasks like getting dressed or brushing teeth or preparing any meals. During this transition from the mild to the moderate stage, your doctor will usually advise you to stop driving for your own safety and for the safety of others. In its more severe stages, persons with dementia require daily help and nursing care, so they may need physical help for bathing, for example. At this stage, it may be the case that the person with dementia would be residing in an assisted living facility or long-term care facility. Uh, where healthcare staff can help provide some of that support. Except for vascular dementia, most other causes of dementia are unfortunately not curable and will eventually progress to death. The average time from diagnosis to death is five to eight years, but there's a lot of variability between individuals, such that some persons can live for 10 or 20 years after a diagnosis of dementia. When death occurs, it's usually as a complication of difficulties with eating and drinking and is often due to uh, malnutrition or pneumonia. There's a type of medical care called palliative care that can help uh, provide support for symptoms of people in the terminal stages of dementia.